This advanced base, or space station, will be headquarters for the final ascent to the moon. Our space satellite will have the shape of a wheel, measuring 200 feet across. This outside rim will contain living and working quarters. Just below the radio and radar antenna is the atomic reactor. Its seat will be used to drive a turbo generator, which supplies the station with electricity. Sometimes you ask yourself, are these people human? Will there be another reset? I called it reset number four. But there could have been more, of course. What about the International Space Station? If it is a counter-rotating mechanism they are building there, there could be two ways they are using it. One to influence our crater, or the second option, influence the time layers. Or maybe both. With mathematics, it is possible to duplicate the geometry of space inside our equations, to make a copy of it, only in reverse. In this reversed version, the copy of the black hole behaves differently. Instead of not being able to escape from its inside, all objects are on the contrary destined to escape from it. This is what we call a white hole. Now that we find ourselves in possession of this copy of space-time, we are able to stick it underneath our original hole. We form a structure which is much more satisfactory with the shape of a tube rather than a simple hole. It is this type of structure which we call a wormhole. If such a structure exists, then the wormhole must necessarily connect two portions of space-time together. We can quickly start to dream of a future in which spaceships might go through such shortcuts in space-time to travel from galaxy to galaxy. Well, in my view, there are no galaxies, but time layers. Let's say you are flying around in the first time layer and you find a way to make a hole to the second layer. You fly around in the second layer and you decide to go home. What would you find? Would you end up in a planet of the apes scenario? Maybe there you would find your ancestor, the missing link the link between human and ape? Well, what is the problem? Let's say you have four time layers and you manage to go from the fourth layer to the third layer. But now you have ended up in a time period where the fourth layer wasn't even created yet. So you cannot go back to something that isn't there. Let's say you wait for a new reset until the fourth layer is created again. You fly through it, but you destroy it again. Theoretically, there would be only one way out. You would hang in space, wait for the fourth layer to be created, and from there, from space, you can return into the fourth layer. Let's say that humanity in the future decided to go into the past. Would they have landed on the planet of the apes? And where would the spaceship be? Well, I know where it is. And I know the period they landed. Looking at the size of the pilot, it must have been prehistory. Let's try another explanation concerning Atlantis. Let's go back to the theory of the reflections and the reset. So as you noticed, 
the mirror image is always coming closer to the earth. So at a certain point it will hit the earth. What would happen? Take a look again at the inverted pyramid I showed. What is stone? Stone is the lack of water. What is mud? Mud is 50% water and 50% stone. So in this case, matter would be pure water. Let's say when the last image hits the earth, everything changes into water. This could be the Big Bang, the first sound wave, repeating itself over and over again like an echo, creating, destroying, creating, destroying. Let's say history repeats itself. Humanity colonizes the bigger earth. Center of this culture is Saturn or Atlantis. But in this period, the last reflection is about to hit earth and change everything into water. No place to escape, except take all the DNA, put it in a spaceship, make a wormhole, go to the past and start all over again. Okay, but what about God? Wasn't it God? Who gave the order to build the ark. What is the mastermind behind all this? Let's say you are walking on a timeline. You put down a book. You start walking again. Faster and faster. You stop. You want to take the book, but it's no longer there. You look in the mirror, but nobody's there. You look at your hands but they are disappearing. All that's left is a screen. And even that is disappearing. This state of being, without an observer, I would call the Fa. The void, when you are pure energy. Now let's have the second player, the reflector. Let's say the Fa and the Reflector come together. Now the Fa becomes the engine of the Reflector. This of course is the Atom. Now the Void is seeing its reflection in the mirror. The zero is observing the one. This, of course, is the start of the matrix. Now, when you're walking on a timeline and you put down your book, the book will be projected in the holographic universe. Reality becomes a 3D projection. Let's replace reflector with atom. So you have the Fa, the atom, so the Fa is Eva and the atom is Adam. Atom has two parts, a male and a female part, Isis and Osiris. So what's the story? Let's recapitulate, you have the atom you have the Fa, then you have the snake, and of course you have the apple. Let's compare that with a clock. So you have the mechanism, the atom, the battery, the Fa, the clock face is the apple, the pattern of the movement is the snake. 
let's say that the clock face is damaged. That would alter the movement of the snake. Imagine a perfectly calibrated counter-rotating mechanism. Would this have been Eden? Then its orbit gets disturbed. That causes it to wobble. That creates the apep pattern. So what's the story? Well, there is no story. This painting is just showing how it is. The atom, the fa and the disturbed snake pattern. Symbolized by the apple. But religion, of course, had to blame someone. You have God, a disobedient humanity, and, of course, women. Religion is always blaming women. Well, in a way, I did the same. I was looking to blame something. And in a way, it is the Solomon Star. But only because it is malfunctioning. So you have the Solomon system and the organic system. Skew it to the right. Skew it to the left. Fast forward in a 2D system. Take a look in a 3D system. What if the cell division was a consequence of the fall of man? What if the organic system is a deviation of perfection? If we were a deviation on a walnut tree, we would be aborted. That is called natural selection. But if we are part of a bigger system, that's impossible. Maybe the collective is trying some kind of shock therapy. Put the system in a shock and while it is in a shock, it might remember its original status. So if I'm playing the devil's advocate again, all the 9-11 events might be a way to waken us up. It looks like they are getting desperate, because the events are happening faster and faster. It's like trying to wake an alcoholic. If you try to take away the bottle, the alcoholic will see you as a threat. How do we get out of this? Let's take the moment you die. You go to hell. You go to heaven, you see Jesus, you see Lucifer, your favorite dog, your granddad. But the problem is, there is still an observer. So you are still in the matrix. Let's say there is a moment you say, hey, I'm out of the matrix. Well, the fact you are saying it means you're still in it, because you need an observer. And a part of the matrix is the observer. Let's say that the matrix was supposed to be a mirror funhouse, but it got out of balance. It started to make this eight form. You start in a cell in the water, make an 8 form and die. And then you start all over again, in the water, in the cell, start of the reincarnation cycle. Take all the DNA, put it in a spaceship, make a wormhole, go to the past and start all over again. 
So in my view, the fall of man was the start of the cell division, the reincarnation cycle, and finally, death. But how do we get out? Do you want to get out? Because when you're out, you are void. Well, the only way to get out is when an external force decides to pull you out. And that would be God, but the real God, and not the force pretending to be God. So what are we doing here? And what is the cause of the fall of man? If the white sun is a white hole, something could have come out of it and disturbed the pattern of the counter-rotating mechanism. Now there are two possibilities. One, this object smashed our planet out of its orbit. Or the second option is this object is still here and it is bringing our energy field out of balance. Let's go back to the atom. The atom has two parts, the Isis and the Osiris. The Osiris is the Or Isis, the mirror of Isis. That means you have the observer, Isis, and the observed, Osiris. Now in 1700, you have the rise of the machines. Now a new mirror is created, the TV screen. Now the question is, can you change Isis by changing Osiris? In other words, can you change reality by changing the reality on the TV screen? Let's explain it in another way. So you have Isis and her mirror image or Isis. Whenever Isis makes a move, or Isis will follow. That is what the mirror image does. Let's do the impossible. Move the mirror image first. The question is, will Isis follow? Will the object follow its mirror image? If it does, you have inverted the system. If the magic mirror machine is showing the climate is changing. Will the observer manifest this reality? I think it will. So whatever controls the mirror machine controls reality. So what is the fall of man? We were the Ka building our paradise, the Ba. But some entity took over the Ba and pretended to be the Ka, the God. So now we have become the Ba, the believers, creating the world of the parasite. And slowly, we become one of them. Time to break the spell.